It's been a coon's age since I've had a shoestring beat. What does a well-stocked pantry look like, in my opinion? This is a pretty solid pantry. I think for each family in America, we should have a one-year supply of food. What does that look like as far as calories? Let's assume everyone in your family needs 2,000 calories a day times 365 days a year. Do the math. I forget what that number is. It's like a bajillion calories. It's a lot. And it, most people think they have a lot more than they actually do. Some people will say, oh yeah, I've got, I've got months of food. But really when you dial it down and you start doing the math on the actual calories, it's probably more like a couple weeks of food. I think that everyone should have at least a year supply of food. Uh, the Mormon church out here in Utah, for example, they recommend that everybody has a two-year supply of food. And I think that that's really, really smart. It takes time. It takes money. It takes energy to invest in those, those stored up calories. But I think it's a really, really smart idea because we just don't know what the future holds. This pantry has a variety of foods, which I think is a really big key that a lot of people miss out on. They go for the giant big bags of rice and beans, and they have a lot of it maybe, which is great. That's awesome. You should have a staple uh, in your diet, a staple food such as rice and beans. I think that's a solid choice, but you need to have variety. Our, we were not meant, we will not be healthy if we're not eating a variety of types, different types of foods. So this pantry has all kinds of things from canned salmon and corned beef hash and tuna fish for protein sources to all the various types of carbohydrates and freeze-dried milks all sorts of things. They've even got dehydrated orange peels for vitamin C. This is this is really, really good stuff here. It, does it have everything that you could possibly think of? Probably not, but that's okay. It's a really, really, really good start, and this is a good quantity. Storage of these types of things is difficult for people in more urban uh, type settings, especially if you're in small apartments and things. You're not always going to have a root cellar like this to be able to put all your food in. So it's going to be difficult and you're going to have to be more creative. And I've given ideas like that in different videos, such as storing stuff underneath your bed, replacing your actual uh, bed spring with buckets of food. So you have to be creative and think outside the box or find alternative places to store your foods outside of your home. That's on you to figure that out, those solutions out. But having a variety of foods, calorie dense foods is another really, really big one. Don't just get a whole bunch of empty calories with nothing in it. And salmon here has a lot of bang for the buck. Not only is it high in calories and fat, good fats, it's just gonna have a ton of protein in it. Canned foods are good because they last a long time. Even after their best buy date, expiration dates, they're still fine. Again, I'm not telling you to eat expired foods. I'm not telling you to do that. Don't eat expired foods for the record. It's a lot of people don't think about fats, cooking oils and such. This is Crisco right here. I do not recommend Crisco, although it probably lasts forever. This will probably be here, you know, for the next millennia and still be viable as Crisco, but I don't recommend it. What I do recommend is storing something like this lard right here. This is going to be really good cooking oil. It, if it's canned properly, it will last a long, long, long time and still be good. Cooking oil such as coconut oil is good. Coconut oil has a really long shelf life. And like I said before, it gives your food more bang for the buck. You have something to cook in, of course, but it adds a lot of calories and fat. Coffee, it is advised to store in a whole bean form because it will last a lot longer. If you want to continue drinking coffee when it becomes not so available anymore, then I suggest you stockpile coffee. Yes, there's a lot of alternatives out there. Like out here in the West, we've got Mormon tea, Brigham tea, which is really good. I actually like it a lot. Um, and there's also several other al coffee alternatives, but it never really will replace coffee. So if you want that and you want to keep continuing to drink coffee when the grid goes down, make sure you're storing whole bean coffee and have a way to grind it. Seasonings, salts, peppers, all that stuff is, is going to be really important because, like I said before, eating plain rice and beans is dull. I mean, that's going to be a pretty miserable, boring life if that's what you're eating every day. So... Having a, a good variety of sauces and and just salt and pepper. I mean, really, you just have a good supply of that. And having lots of salt. Salt's a big one. You can preserve foods with salt. You can uh, add flavor to your salts. And salt is just a necessary mineral for you to continue functioning properly so your muscles work. It's, it is a requirement. I've had comments. Well, I've mentioned this before, and I've had comments where people say, you know, salt's not necessary. You don't have to salt your food. It salts, I've never salted my food and I'm still, I still do all the things. Okay, yes, but your food itself, if especially if it's like canned foods and stuff, it probably has salt in it already. So you're limited on storage space 
make sure you're going for the bang for the buck stuff. So that really high calorie dense, nutrient dense, lots of vitamins and minerals. Make sure you're going for that stuff as your priority. But if you got space and you got the room to store it, feel free to go for the luxury items such as, you know, like this kind of stuff, the ginger beers and sodas and things like that. If you want them, they last forever. They're not going to really expire. Um, and if you want to continue drinking that stuff, go for it. I don't recommend having a high sugar diet, especially if the grid goes down and you're going to have to have a dentist appointment that's not going to be available. So <laughs> I wouldn't, I would cut down on that just in general, just to have be a, a healthier individual. I definitely a preferred alternative to any sugary drinks such as sodas, a, a, a tea of some sort with mixed with some honey, which is actually pretty beneficial in a lot of ways, especially raw honey, the good stuff. That that is what I would definitely prefer over any kind of sodas and stuff. So I would I would plan that out. Teas are lightweight; they don't take up a whole lot of space, and you could store a whole lot of it for a long time. I would say, be smart about how you store your stuff. So instead of storing things, you know, like big, huge fifty gal or fifty pound bags of whatever it is, break that stuff into smaller containers that can store well. So you can only you only have to open up one at a time if you should have to dip into it. Hopefully you never really have to in an emergency situation, but but if you should have to, you're only opening a small container at a time and you're not having to open up the whole package. Don't stockpile a whole bunch of junk that you're not gonna eat on a regular basis because you do want to try to cycle it. You want to make sure that you're putting the old stuff in the front and pulling from that stuff on a regular basis. Like all this these things in here. It's hopefully something that we would eat on a regular basis and it doesn't just sit here for decades upon decades and end up spoiling because you don't want to waste your money, right? You want to invest your money in things that are going to be the most beneficial for you and your family. And investing in food is a, is a big one. That's the best insurance policy you could probably have. So invest in foods that you're already eating so it doesn't spoil, doesn't go bad, you don't have to throw anything away. Store your stuff in a cool location, out of the sunlight, right? Place that's not going to be exposed to lots of moisture, all of that protect it as best you can keep it up off of the ground if you can on shelves like this so the air can move around it and it can be ventilated that's a that's a big deal put out rodent traps keep the stuff away from it you don't want to find that your stockpiles of rice and beans has you know mouse poo all over it thanks so much for watching friends leave a comment tell me what you think about this stockpile right here tell me what your thoughts are on this if it's sufficient for let's say a family of two I think this is probably a fairly good supply. This might be, I'd say this is probably a year supply for sure for a family of two, just by ballpark looking at it. I think it would last a year. But anyway, let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know some of the strategies and techniques that you're doing to store food away, if you're storing food away at all. And I cannot wait to see you on the next one.